Yarikawa has plenty of warriors, if their walls haven't fallen. I put down the Yarikawa Rebellion. Its people have no love for me. The rebellion of Clan Yarikawa against the rule of Lord Shimura on the island of Tsushima is one that appears to hold little significance in the overall story of the ghost of Tsushima. Now don't get me wrong. If there was an exact moment when Jin started to become the legend of the ghost, I would say Yarikawa was actually the exact time and place where he stepped into becoming the actual legend. It was the first time a decent number of civilians had seen him fight, moving in a way they all described as unnatural, as if possessed by a demon. And with the town and residents of Yarikawa still holding intense resentment towards Lord Shimura and all the other samurai who follow him, the ghost was an enticing new leader to get behind. Jin was the blood nephew of the man they hated so much, and here he was using tactics and methods that would undoubtedly be frowned upon by his uncle. In a way, following Jin was also the perfect solution to them. He pretty much single-handedly broke the Mongol siege that was getting tighter on Yarikawa by the day, essentially saving them. And in some way, by following the ghosts, it would continue their defiance against Shimura. But that's not to say all of Yarikawa saw it that way. During the main story, we also don't get the full picture of what is going on here. Sadly, we don't know what Yarikawa looked like before the events of the game, but the time we get to this region, it's been heavily affected by the Mongol invaders, with many villages completely destroyed. It's one of the more ravaged areas in the game, which makes Yarikawa's fall from grace even more impressive. Before we get deeper into the state of Yarikawa during the game's story though, let's talk about the great Yarikawa before its fall. Yarakawa was the clan most known for their skilled swordsmen. The only other clan renowned for their particular skill is Clan Nagao, the same clan Sensei Ishikawa is known as a mentor for, which is fitting because he's the one Jin gets his bow from, and there are many stories surrounding Ishikawa's own skill with a bow, but I digress. Clan Yadakawa was known for training a generation of the island's best swordsmen. They became so skilled with the sword, they developed a family technique known as the Dance of Wrath, a move that was so lethal and so quick, it'll rip through an enemy's defenses. Lord Tokiyasu Yadakawa, the one ruling Clan Yadakawa at the time, became the best to ever use a single technique. With a clan of gifted swordsmen and a deadly secret technique under his sleeve, Lord Tokiyasu Yadakawa led a rebellion against Clan Shimura. This was still despite it being said, Tokiasa was beloved by everyone, including the people ruled by Lord Shimura. Regardless of all the love and praise though, Tokiasa was resentful of Clan Shimura's power, and so began what was to be known as the Yadakawa Rebellion. Let's just say it was a rebellion that was less than honorable. During the main story, we seen Yadakawa was willing to send assassins to kill Lord Shimura in private when he least expected it, but that was just scratching the surface. A retainer of Clan Yadakawa was out slaughtering people indiscriminately, and was doing it so much so, he became to be known as the Butcher of Yadakawa. Tokiasa's resentment of Shimura was so powerful it was felt through every single encounter between either side of the fight, hitting a point where Tokiasa ended up killing Shimura's father and brothers. Clan Yadakawa had their sights on one thing only, taking control of the island and no longer living in the shadow of Clan Shimura, stopping at nothing and showing no mercy to anyone who stood in their way. And it honestly looked as if Yadakawa would become the dominant clan on the island, with Clan Shimura's defeat just a matter of time. That is until Clan Sakai and Clan Adachi stepped in and came to Clan Shimura's rescue. With the intervention of these two clans, the tide of the rebellion turned. I'm assuming it became a numbers game at that point, facing the might of three clans, two of which granted the luxury of not suffering constant fighting, Yadakawa eventually crumbled, with the rebellion ending when Lord Shimura decapitated Tokiasa. This created an entirely different set of problems though. With Tokiasa's death and Clan Yadakawa's defeat, Shimura disbanded the clan. However, he didn't take control of the region, meaning Clan Yadakawa doesn't exist anymore officially, nor do they hold any kind of power. But the region of Yadakawa is still ran by the family. Now the youngest son, Ujimasa, is in charge. Under his leadership, a new generation of people were raised in Yadakawa to harbor nothing but hate and resentment towards Shimura, and by extension, Clan Sakai, blaming both for the fall of their great clan and all the hardships that accompanied being branded as traitors, practically exiled. They were essentially locked in a time capsule. The love they had for Tokiasa only became another intense deep hatred towards Shimura, which led to the other major problem. In death, Tokiasa became a deity, promising to exact revenge on everyone who played a role in the failure of Yadakawa's rebellion giving birth to the mythic tale known as a spirit of Yadakawa's vengeance. Anyone who prayed to the spirit of Yadakawa, 
the spirit of Tokiasa and left some offering to it in Old Yarakawa would have their prayers answered with a dance of wrath. With the Arakawa stuck in this perpetual mindset of hate and resentment, the Mongol invasion gave some of them the perfect cover to take one more chance on exacting revenge on Shimura, with two most notable ones. You were a child when Yarikawa burned, boy. For 15 years, I dreamed of cutting Lord Shimura to the bone. You won't live long enough to face him. The old man taught me the legendary attack before I killed him. Let me show you. Yasuhira Koga was a retainer of Clan Yarakawa and a fierce adversary of Clan Shimura. It's believed he left the island of Asushima following Clan Yarakawa's defeat, as no one heard from him in the rebellion's aftermath. Once the Mongol invasion of Tsushima went underway though, it's that he returned with the Mongols, allying himself with the invaders and utilizing his new alliance as a way to retaliate at Shimura. Upon his return, Yasuhira went after the legendary technique known as the Heavenly Strike, another deadly sword technique, when described as being so fast, your eye couldn't follow it. Yasuhira was so determined to learn this technique, he would stop at nothing to acquire it. He began slaughtering local peasants in a fit of rage when a local musician refused to tell him where to seek the knowledge necessary for this technique, eventually taking an old man as a hostage and killing him once his uses for him was over. This was all just a small glimpse of what Yasuhira was up to during the rebellion of Yarakawa. This was how the butcher of Yarakawa operated. In a very dark way, the life of the rebellion was still being kept alive through him, leaving a trail of bodies showing exactly what happened to those who deny him what he wants. When Jin faces Yasuhira, you can hear the anger and hate in his voice taunting Jin and promising he'll cut Lord Shimura to the bone. Unfortunately for him, even with the Heavenly Strike just learned, Jin swiftly defeated him in a duel, finally killing the Butcher of Yarakawa. Justice for all the people he killed was finally served. The other attempt was by the spirit of Yarakawa itself. Unlike Yasuhira, we don't exactly know who the warrior behind the spirit is, at least in terms of her name. All we do know is based off her skill with the sword and Jin coming across some old samurai gear in an abandoned house it's appeared the so-called spirit was living in, we do know she was a former samurai of clan Yarakawa. Sometime during or after the defeat of Yarakawa, this old samurai decided to give her people of old Yarakawa hope beyond just an armor set and a blade. Masquerading as Tokiasa's vengeance from beyond the grave, she would answer any prayer offering her people left the spirit. Anyone unfortunate enough to end up on that piece of paper left to the spirit would meet their unfortunate end at the hands of someone who knew the dance of wrath. Jin's name ended up on this piece of paper showing the hate and resentment in the area was still strong. It also created a sense of confusion. The clan was disbanded and the death of Tokiasa ended the tradition of passing the dance of wrath down to another, which makes me wonder if this is somehow an inferior version of what the Dance of Wrath was meant to be. Either way, the people of Old Yadakawa have not forgotten who their enemies were and who put them in this position. We can only imagine the level of dismay and sadness when the ghost was so much stronger than any belief in the spirit, killing her. And that's all we know as far as the Yadakawa Rebellion goes right now. It's honestly a very interesting part of the overall game. We see a little bit of it in the main story. When Jin frees Yadakawa, the people do agree to help Lord Shimura, although there is a condition. The condition is that they're promising their allegiance to the ghost and not to Shimura, which in essence could practically lead the entire island down another path of some type of civil war. The game ends showing basically a large number of people rallying to the ghost war cry that is virtually non-existent, but the fact that they're coming and supporting and following the leadership of the ghost rather than the samurai is an interesting point that I hope is explored a little further in the second game, if there is a second game, and that can also lead to a little more tension between Jin and Lord Shimura, if Shimura is even left alive and that's considered canon. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you want me to do some more Ghost of Tsushima videos, please let me know. Like always, taking suggestions, recommendations on anything you want to hear more of. Honestly, while doing research on this video, Clan Adachi sounds pretty interesting, especially if you follow the tales behind Masako. Anyways, my name is Cynic. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.